Good evening, Fellowship Church. Praise the Lord for a midweek, a hump day, and uh, looking forward for another blessed time in God's Word. You can freely eat your pizza while you're I don't know how you can sing and eat at the same time, but we're opening with higher ground. <clears throat> so we don't have a pianist, so we're doing, we're doing a cappella again. See it on the screen, Hannah? Higher ground. I'm pressing on the upward way. New heights I'm gaining every day, still praying as I'm onward bound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay where doubts arise and fears dismay. Though some may dwell where these abound, my prayer, my aim is higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to live above the world, though Satan's darts at me are hurled. For faith has caught the joyful sound, the song of saints on higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, a higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I want to scale the utmost height and catch a gleam of glory bright. But still I'll pray till hand I've found. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land. A higher plane than I have found. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. The next song is, He the pearly gates will open. They that do his commandments, Revelation twenty two fourteen, may enter in through the gates into the city. Love divine so great and wondrous. Deep and mighty, pure, sublime, coming from the heart of Jesus, just the same through tests of time. He, the pearly gates, will open so that I may enter in. For he purchased my redemption and forgave me all my sin. 
What does the second verse say? Like a dove when hunted frightened, as a wounded fawn was I, broken hearted yet he healed me. He will heed the sinner's cry. He, the pearly gates, will open so that I may enter in. For he purchased my redemption and forgave me all my sin. Love divine so great and wondrous, all my sins he then forgave. I will sing his praise forever, for his blood his part to save. He, the pearly gates, will open so that I may enter in. For he purchased my redemption and forgave me all my sin. In life's even tide at twilight, at his door I'll knock and wait. By the precious love of Jesus, I shall enter heaven's gate. He, the pearly gates, will open so that I may enter in. For he purchased my redemption and forgave me all my sin. I love that last line, and forgave me all, not in part, right? All of my sin. Mark? This is Mark. Mark Paulus. Can you hear me now? Very good. Okay, um, I've got a prayer list to, that i got to read to you, and I've got a praise report. I've got two, unless there's someone here that's got... I got a mic right here. Can you hear me now? Oh, yeah. So I've got a prayer list I've got to read to you. And I got a praise, retort, praise report. Now, there's somebody here that's got a three minute praise report. You can run on up here now. Otherwise, I'll get halfway through the prayer list and I'll give you my second one going once. Okay, so Sunday evening I was out for a ride and I found myself down to Colonial Beach. And I walked a little bit past the pier, maybe a football field or so, and I walked back and I passed a couple of people who were kind of parking their car and walking back to the fishing pier. I got back to the pier and I was a little tired from my walk and I sat down, they got kind of like a gazebo where you first get on the pier with like three or four benches. So I sat down on the bench and I'm looking halfway down the pier, which is about the distance from here to the sound room. And I'm seeing a little bit of a commotion going on, three, four people, kind of scattering about and looking over the, the edge of the pier. I'm wondering what's going on. <clears throat> well, here comes about this 14-year-old young lady come wading out of the water next to the pier by me. She kind of kind of looking like the creature from the Black Lagoon and the dark. So I says to her, she gets up on the shore, I says, well, how's the water? She says, cold. She says, my, do my, my mom dropped her car keys off the pier. I says, oh, no, she didn't. So she's coming up, and she's getting ready to walk down to the pier, and her mom's coming this way, getting ready to go in the water, go look for these keys. 
I told her, I said, well, I'm going to pray that God will direct you to those keys. She says, she says, hey, man, she says, all you need is the seed, the faith, the seed of a mustard seed. So I walked on down the pier halfway to where her other daughters were. There were like three daughters from 13 to maybe 18. <clears throat> and they're looking over the side, and they're all kind of holding their cell phones over for the flashlight. <clears throat> and she's going under, and she's looking down, and one daughter's saying, well, you dropped them right here. Well, so it's got to be right in that area, and I'm praying. And they're talking about, they, they come from Quantico, Virginia, and I'm thinking to myself, well, should I be offering to give them a ride home? And, you know, I'm kind of praying and trying to hear God tell me what he wants me to do. I think all he wanted me to do was pray. Within 10 to 15 minutes, the daughter who was next to me on the pier, she's getting all excited, and she says, my mom is the luckiest. I said, praise the Lord. She found them. Yeah, she found them. Mom's down there in the water. She said, yeah, it's a miracle. She's down to four to five feet of water in the dark, although she did drop them next to the pier, and you could try to reason it away. <clears throat> but this woman found those keys, so praise the Lord, and the prayer was answered, and they didn't have to get a motel room or call a locksmith. Thank you, Jesus, for answer prayer. So I'm going into the prayer list, and I'm going halfway through, and we're praying for our pastor's daughter, Cheryl, and her husband, Angelo, Father God will meet their needs. We're praying for Garnett Anderson. I like to include all, in fam all the families represented by these names. I'm praying for salvation. We're praying for physical healing, emotional healing, encouragement. <clears throat> all their needs met. Uh, praying for pastors, uh, grandchildren, Ella Mason and Evan Mason, and their young adults. And uh, we're praying for Jake Jacobs, Betty Stepp, Jimmy Ryan, Damn Duty, Bill Laracy, and daughter Dawn. And we're continuing to pray for Ray and Betty's grandson, Tate. Tate Remo. Ellen Broadwater, Tommy Harris, and family. Is that your son, Tommy? Okay. And he has got a house full. Uh, Sherry Greenhow, Joanne Williams, Myron's Aunt Shirley, who has had the COVID, Butcher Lassinger, Danny and Carolyn McKinney, Kimberly Harris, Jim Heath, Paul Fickner, Zoe Strong, we're still praying for that two and a half year old child of hers who had cancer and then had a good report and then got a report that was coming back. And we are praying, God, that you just <clears throat> destroy that cancer from the root and obliterate it, get it out of her system, not let it return. Praise you, Jesus. Jim Bowie and his sister Sharon, who has brain tumor. And we do pray for healing there and for the healing of Jim's foot. And Jim is an encouragement. We pray for continued blessings on him. Ashley, father's, uh, pastor's granddaughter, Ashley Enstrom, and her son, Adam. Karen Burke, Janice Haig, Oakley Miller, and Linda Griffith, and uh, L. Barringer's sisters. Jeremy and Amy Clem with, with the COVID. Pastor added on here, Daniel Burke and his brother. And then there's underneath that it says Vince, comma, Jane Jr. And uh, Nancy Willis called me, asked for prayer. She and her friend Patricia, I say Pat, uh, coming up from Tennessee, they're going to pick her up and they're going for a ride on up to Martha's Vineyard. So we're praying for travel and mercies and that the, all those involved don't have no health issues or anything like that on their trip. <clears throat> My second testimony, I'm coming out of the Lowe's parking lot on Alex, Route 1 Alexandria <clears throat> earlier this, at, this morning, 11 o'clock-ish. And they kind of have a service lane before you get out on Route 1. And there's a, a guy that's got his three-car trailer parked there on the curb with his pickup truck with dual wheels. You see these vehicles on the highway all the time. They're delivering new and used vehicles. This was a three-car trailer, and they call it an ARC trailer. They kind of went like this. So I, I watched him put the middle car on 
And I thought, I'm going to pull over there and watch them as they load these cars because I've got personal interest in that that I won't go into. But, and I was going to say, and I did ask the guy, there was two people there, one in the truck and, and one man kind of supervising. I says to him, I said, well, do you have to have a CDL license to drive this rig? He says, yeah, you have to have a CDL license. And then there was a third driver who was backing up a van behind the trailer to start pulling it up the trailer to be number three of the three-car trailer. Are you with me? This man who looked like he's supervising, he's standing at the end of the trailer between the two rails where you drive up when the tire's on the rail. I hope you understand what I'm talking about. He's standing, I don't know why he's standing there, but he's directing this driver to line his tires up with the rails. And he's standing right there between the rails. And the guy looks like he's kind of anxious to start his tires driving up on the extension that you add to the rails to get it from the road onto the trailer. I'm watching this guy, and he, you had to be very delicate about the speed involved here. You know, it's like a half a mile an hour, just to give you an idea what I'm talking about. This man is still in, standing between these rails. And the man is going more than just lining up his tires on these two extensions. And I mean to tell you, he came this close. I says, wait. Now, I don't know if it was because I was there and God's presence was there because God is inside of me, Jesus Christ, the spirit of God is inside of me. He stopped and I told him, you need to go back. And I don't know the man in between those two rails, what he was doing in there in the first place, I don't know. And if anything, he looked like he might have been a little perturbed about me being there. I don't know, but I want to tell you something. My spirit was heavy because that man was that this much distance and a portion of a second away from having his legs crushed. It took me a few minutes to get, for my spirit to recover from that. Thank you, God, that that man didn't get hurt. Thank you, Jesus. But whether or not I had any involvement in it or not, it doesn't make any difference. But I just praise God. And, and I did pray for those three drivers for continued mercy and healing and protection, that kind of thing on the highway. So now I'm going into the second half of our prayer list. We're praying for Rita Younger, John, and Dory Dardesty, I'm sorry, Hardesty, pastor's sister-in-law, Dory Hardesty and her husband, John, uh, Mike and Debbie Boer, Ed Horn, Mike Winston, Robert Pickle, Dale Hayes, Jimmy Reese, Bobby Anderson, Steve and Brenda Sears, Charles and the Newman family, Debbie Roberts, Peyton Perez with leukemia. God, you are a mighty God, and leukemia don't scare you none. We thank you and we praise you, Lord, that uh, you, you will completely heal that man's body from the top of his head to the bottom of his feet. Thank you, Jesus. David Maddie, Jeff Burke, Kimberly Martin, Ricky Rogers, Catherine Sarson, pastor's other granddaughter, Rachel Enstrom Sisson is her new married name, and her husband, and their one year plus baby, Richard. Father, meet their needs and thank you and praise you. Pastor says he talked to Dave Bean a little while ago this evening, and he is going for his surgery tomorrow. Whether I guess they're going to pull his eye out because the cancer is behind his eye. And Pastor said that this type of cancer has 98% healing recovery rate, and we're thanking, praising God that he has already healed Dave Bean 2,000 years ago. By your stripes, he is healed. And we're praying for peace for Dave and for his wife, Toby, and that all oh, will <clears throat> come out just fine and well. Chuck Jones, John Burnham, Brandon Rose, Maverick, Maverick Lehman, that's Sue's son, and for Sue as well, and the rest of her sons and her daughter. Jim Farmer, Stan Kocheski, how about uh, Christian Kocheski, how's he doing? He's doing fine. I'm glad to hear it. I drove past the house today. Thank you, Jesus. So we're going into prayer now. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we do love you, and I thank you 
for the opportunity of being known by you. And, and I can say, Lord, I often say to myself, I am fully known and loved by you, God, regardless <laughs> of my shortcomings, past, present, and future. I am loved by the Almighty God. Thank you for that, Lord. And you are a great and mighty. You are a wonderful God who cares and loves and provides for us. And uh, thank you, Lord, for the promise of having sealed us and that you will continue that which you have begun in us to the day of Jesus Christ, referring to the time that our spirit leaves out of his body and we come home to you. We thank you, Lord, for that assurance. And, Lord, we do have that. And there's no question about that. We cannot lose our salvation. And that is how Pastor Marvin Harris preaches. And I stand alongside with him on that. So, Father, thank you. Thank you for all the healing. Thank you for all the jobs. And I know there is one praise report in here regarding uh, someone found a job this week, but I'm not going to give it away. Uh, we, we do thank you and praise you for that, Father. Uh, you know, we could go on till late in the evening if everybody started praying and thought about things that you have in, on mind. But, Lord, uh, all those that... Uh, all those things that we have in our spirit at this time, those in this room, those who are online, uh, our prayer needs, and those who we are, our loved ones and family members, extended family and friends, especially those who are not yet saved, especially, Lord, for those uh, who have serious diseases and those who are in bondage to addictions, Lord, we cry out for your mercy and for your deliverance. Father, I love you and praise you in Jesus' name. Pastor? If you have your Bible, oh, okay. <clears throat> turn to Second uh, Corinthians four. Well, there was over a two hundred spot caught the other day on the fishing trip. What a blessing! Amen. That was a real blessing. I was a little worried about going out, but who got mackerel? Who did? Come on. Bruni? Yeah. Hey, did you take it home with you? I kissed Good. All right. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> that. And we're going to 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Um, we're going to look at, uh, I'll keep an eye out for you. That's the title of this message. Anybody in here need encouragement tonight? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen, me too. And where do we get it from? The Word of God. All right. Uh, I have a few thought provokers we've written down here. Life is short. Smile while you have teeth. Pretty good, isn't it? <laughs> when nothing is going right, go left. No rain, no flowers. Uh, let's just be who we really are. I like the sign back in five minutes, which is never true. I enjoy, uh, someone said, long romantic walks to the frigid air. That's good, isn't it? Sound like Randy Collins, but moving on. <laughs> I wonder how many calories we burn when we jump to conclusions. That's a good question, isn't it? You never know what you have until you clean your room. That's good, isn't it? Thought provokers. It was Badger Stadium in Madison, Wisconsin, packed with 60,000 diehard fans, University of Wisconsin supporters, watching their football team take on Michigan State Spartans. It was soon obvious <clears throat> that Michigan had the better team. What was odd, however, was the score became more and more lopsided. <coughs> Excuse me, there were bursts of applause and shouts of joy coming from the Wisconsin fans. <coughs> Excuse me. How could they cheer when their team was getting clobbered? Uh, they were getting whipped, 
clipped, dipped, stripped, flipped. How can you cheer? It turns out that 70 miles away, their Milwaukee Brewers baseball team was beating the St. Louis Cardinals in game three of the 1982 World Series. Listen to this. Many of the fans were listening to baseball on their portable radios. They were responding with joy to something other than their immediate circumstances. Have you all got me? Their focus was upon the delights of that which is unseen instead of their difficult circumstances uh, that were seen. What was this verse again, or, or we haven't read it yet, 2 Corinthians 4.18 says, We look not on things that are seen, but on things that are not seen. For the things that are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. I like that, don't you? You know, I've had Mike Saul on my mind this week a lot and the fun we had over the years. I remember one time we were praying. We used to get up in the dark and we'd go for a walk in the dark and we would pray. And I remember one time he was selling, he used to sell my cars for me. I would fix up cars and then he would sell them. And it was a Honda Accord. I remember that. That's what I used to deal with. And uh, that morning I said, well, Mike, let's pray. And so I prayed that God would sell that car. And it was dark. It was probably about 5 in the morning. And Mike, when he drove home, he, we lived a mile apart from each other. When he drove home, a man was standing in the driveway. And he said, I want that car. And he had cash, I believe, if I remember right. It was like back in those days, it was probably three or 4000 And he paid him in cash. I'm telling you what, God answered that prayer before the daylight came. Are you all with me? And I'm here to tell you this blessing. I enjoyed it so much. The next morning, Mike and I are out walking. I asked him, yeah, the day before, I said, Mike, you need anything? He said, no, I don't need anything. So now I'm walking and sort of chuckling because we sold that car in the dark. I said, Mike, you need anything? And he gave me a list of things that he wanted the, got the Lord to answer. God answers prayer, amen? Uh, moving on. Uh, all things, in verse 15, if we back up a little bit, are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might be through the thanksgiving uh, of, you know what, I think I missed that verse, 4.15, all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Um, redound is from the Greek meaning to overflow uh, or blossom. And uh, I love abundant grace. I like that thought. Grace uh, and mercy. Let's move on. Um, for that, for which cause we faint not, but through our out, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Our light affliction, I like it. The Lord says, our light affliction, that thing that seems so hard or that's so heavy on you today, he calls it a light affliction, which is but for a moment worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And, you know, I think of my brother when I think of those verses. My brother Walter, my second dad, 17 years older than I was. And Walter stepped out into glory about four years ago. But 25 years before, his doctors, when he was 63, said he was dying and they couldn't figure out why. And uh, when he told me that, I said, Walter, we need to just sit down and look at scripture. He said, Marvin, Mama told me I was never baptized, but it really had never been saved. So we sat down and we went over the scripture. Walter asked Jesus to save him. 
And I want to tell you, when he got saved, the Lord touched him physically, and he was healed. Went on to live 25 more years, and he served the Lord uh, at, his, at our former church, which was his church for the last 25 years. I served it in the ministry there, and uh, it was such a joy to see my brother Walter always praising, uh, always, when I would call him, I don't care if I called him about a hubcap he needs for his car. When we were close, he'd say, okay, Marvin, let's pray. Every time he would pray, and I said to his daughters, I said, did Walter do the same with you? She said, yes, grand, uh, uh, grand, uh, uncle, said every time he had to pray for you. What a blessing, what a joy to see my brother get saved. I, I will tell you, I've been, I tell people all the time I have lived an abundant life. My other brother, Billy, I've told you all the story, he was uh, being operated on uh, for face cancer and they had cut his nose almost off and laid it to the side and they took skin from over here and come across and it was awful but they had to do it when he was awake and uh, and he used to laugh at us when we would talk to him about the Lord. Uh, he was not interested but on that table every time they would stick him and they had to put about 50 needles in his face and the only reason I can think of is, is maybe the fluids were making him swell so they could make sure it was stitched right. But every time he would go, oh, oh. And I was at his feet, and I was holding his foot. I was patting him on the foot, praying the whole time. And uh, when they finally finished, I took him home. I said, Billy, I was praying for you the whole time. He said, Marvin, I was praying, asking Jesus to save me. But he wasn't talking about salvation. He was asking, he thought he was going to die on that table. So he didn't want to die. He was asking God to save him so that he would be alive. So we sat down and, uh, and I shared the gospel with him. And I shared the gospel with him in, in his, uh, his uh, chair that he sits in all the time. You know, he asked Jesus to save him that night. And we had a time. And you know, it just dawned on me talking to you about it. His lounge chair, when he died, he died in that lounge chair where he'd gotten saved five years before. And uh, and two weeks, I know I'm, I've shared this with you all before, but it, I just need to tell you, God, we serve a great God. Amen? Amen? And Billy uh, told me two weeks before, I told him, when I get serious with God, I get on my knees and pray. And Billy uh, called me two weeks before he died, and he said, Marvin, I just want you to know, he was 84. He said, I get on my knees every morning and pray for you. Every morning, two weeks before he died. What a brother, amen? What a joy. Uh, you know, there's people that we need to reach. I'm not going in this direction, but I'm just here to tell you there's people we can reach and we need to reach. As a preacher, my job, I'm going back to this now, is to keep an eye out for you uh, and remind you that this is not all there is. Wow, what a time we're going to have on the other side. Uh, to remind you there is an eternity out there. You know that verse that says, uh, when I think of eternity, I've come to new conclusions, Bill. I'm convinced that there's going to be things on the other side we didn't think would be there. I do believe with all my heart that animals are going to be there. All There's horses we know there, and, and Jesus was eating fish, and the uh, lion will lay down with a lamb. I believe that man's best friend, dogs, I believe there's going to be dogs there. I know one woman that took her dog with her. She was a very elderly lady, but she went to church one day, and the preacher said, there's no dogs going to be in heaven. And I thought, how could he say that? And she was so furious 
She told her husband, when my dog dies, we're going to freeze him. When I die, you put him in the casket with me. And they did. They did. But I'm not saying that that's how the dog would have got to heaven, but I'm here to tell you, I do believe animals will be in heaven. Cats, no. But dogs, yes. I'm just kidding you. I'm just kidding you all. But, uh, and I was going in that direction for another. Oh, uh, that verse that says, and I shared this, I think, with you all recently. um, Lay up not for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust doth corrupt, but lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust doth corrupt. Am I saying that verse right? What I like about that is, down here, vehicles are rusting. They're metal. And, and you get rust from metal. But according to that verse, it sounds to me like there's metal in heaven. Are you all with me? I believe that we might even have some of our cars on the other side. What do you think of that? Huh? Remember, Joe, that old piece of junk you used to drive? You you still got it. I'm kidding you. Hey, I'm just quoting scripture. I do believe. I have not seen nor ear heard nor has it entered into the heart of man the things that God has planned for them that love him. Uh, Rose, I don't know what you're going to do with that uh, walker because you won't need it in a few years, will you? I have a new body. Moving on. Uh, It's amazing how many people have gone out of their way, then go through great pains and make elaborate preparations for retirement years. Their 401s uh, are out of sight. Everything's looking good, making big plans to enjoy themselves without realizing that at one time the average person only lived about two years after retirement. hi yeah, yeah. Huh? Are you getting ready to retire, Joe? I know you are. That's why I said that. Anyway, we live, we give so little thought to preparing for a hundred trillion, quadrillion eons of centuries of eternity. Let's not retire. Let's refire for him. And let's do whatever we can now. Can I get an amen? Amen. Uh, Point number one today, we live with one eye on eternity because it involves the promise of a new body. That means you might all, it's going to be a perfect body, you might all look like me someday. Can I get an amen, Mike? I'm messing with y'all. When I have a perfect body, you know what's really funny. You know, as a man thinketh, so is he. When I was in basic training in the Army, Fort Knox, there was some muscular guys in basic training. I was a slob. I'll be real truthful with you. Don't tell anybody. I was a slob. But you know what they all called me in basic training? The bod. You know why? Because I get around them guys lifting weights and all, and I'd be doing this. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? Oh, boy, those were some years. But they called me the bod, and I had no, nothing like they did. But God has blessed me physically. I'm still here, 80, 75 years old. Amen? And I can still kick that lintel on that door when I walk out that door right there. I can still kick it. Don't ask me how. But I can. What was that? I don't know how either, but you did. Big feet. Big feet. That's good. Listen. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved. We have a building of God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. 
You know, for years I had trouble with uh, cremation. But when I saw that verse, I thought, you know what? Uh, he says, if our earthly house uh, of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, a house not made with hands eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, this is, uh, by the way, Second Corinthians 5, 1 and 2. For in this we groan earnestly desiring to be clothed upon uh, with our house which is from heaven. The word tabernacle there is like a tent, a temporary service. Uh, and I will tell you this, tents are fun once in a while. Anybody here ever go out and, 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 and go camping and get in a tent? I remember the last time I went in a tent and some of my dear friends set my tent up and it was on the top of a mountain. Randy, it was probably you that set that tent up because it was on a big round like hill. And when I was laying in that tent, I was either laying this way or this way. It was on a mound. And I tried to sleep. I was so miserable. Uh, by the time daylight came, I was crying, Mama, I needed a physical therapist. Amen? Uh, and you know, tents are hot or cold. And when it rains, it seems like water eventually gets in. Eventually they wear out, they rot, they tear, just like our bodies. Tents are not permanent, like these bodies. They eventually go to the grave, but praise God, our spirit and soul go to be with the Lord. Amen. I will tell you, I have had so many funerals. Uh, if it wasn't for the Lord and knowing where I'm going, and knowing a lot of these people are saved, uh, it, it could be very depressing. I'm doing a funeral next week. Uh, but uh, uh, I like the thought of having a brand new body, um, eternal in the heavens, the Word of God tells me. And guess what? It won't wear out. Amen. No need for hospitals, no need for MRIs. Before we got saved, we'd talk of death and use words like, I believe, I hope, I think. But now I love saying, I know. I know where I'm going. Amen? And he says in 1 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5 1, for we know we'll have new bodies. Some think when they die, it's over. Psalms 14.1 says, the fool says in his heart, there is no God. But we know there is a God. Some think when they die, we are recycled. You know, I remember hearing it all back in those days before I got saved. Uh, and that is a joke. Uh, somebody told me that uh, this one couple believed in reincarnation. And, uh, and they just couldn't stand each other. And they eventually died. And the crazy thing is, the man came back as a dog, and she came back as a flea. I mean, can you imagine? Some think when we die, we go to purgatory. But that is not in the Word of God. It contradicts Scripture. 2 Corinthians 5 eight tells me we are confident. I love these words in 2 Corinthians. Well, for we know eternal life in the heavens... And now we are confident, I say, and willing, rather, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Uh, absent from the body equals present with the Lord. Wow, I like that. One day, I do believe this, if I'm preaching, you know, I've often thought, wouldn't it be fun preaching in the pulpit and die in the pulpit? Or I knew a friend, matter of fact, Colleen Gaines, uh, Matt Gaines' mom, I was with her daddy after I first got saved. We were at a men's prayer meeting, and he closed in prayer and never opened his eyes. 
He died praying. I'll never forget that. I was a young Christian. But imagine him praying and then stepping into the presence of the Lord. Paul said in Philippians 1, 21, for me to live is Christ and to die is gain. And then he said in verse 23, I'm in a strait between two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ, which is far better. Amen. James tries to get us to keep one eye on eternity. You know, I told you the title of this message earlier was, uh, I'll keep an eye out for you. I remember one guy, uh, seems like people will tell you, well, go see so-and-so. Tell him I sent you. And ever go through that? Hey, we did it tonight. We, Ray Remo needs carpet. We told him to go see Renee. And, uh, but I remember um, this guy. I said, Marvin, go over there and see that guy over there. Tell him I sent you. I went over there, and I said to him, hey, this guy, this buddy of mine came to my shop, and he told me to come over and see you. I, then I gave him the guy his name. You know what he said? When you see him, you tell him I'm going to kill him. I'm thinking I'm going to get a deal on whatever it was. He told me he's going to kill the guy. So uh, you better make sure whoever you're talking to will keep an eye out for you, and there'll be somebody worthy to keep their eye out for you. James said, um, on keeping, let us keep one eye on eternity, he said, Ye that say today or tomorrow we will go into such a city and continue there for a year and buy and sell and get gain, whereas you know not what is on the morrow. For what is your life? It is a vapor that appeareth for a little while and quickly vanishes away. Uh, for what you ought to say is, if the Lord will, we shall live or do this, or do that. I will tell you, that is Christian maturity. Amen? John Quincy Adams, someone asked him uh, how he was personally doing. And Adams replied, I'm doing very well, thank you. Thank you. However, this house that John Adams lives in is growing old. The hatch is wearing thin, and it trembles in every gale. I think John Quincy Adams We'll have to soon move out. But he himself is doing well, sir. That's good. That's a great answer right there, isn't it? 1 Corinthians 15, 53, For this corruptible must put on incorruption. This mortal must put on immortality. Uh, you know, that tells me, again, we're going to look good one day. 1 Peter 1, 23, Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible seed which liveth, by the word of God which liveth and abideth forever. The second point tonight, the pledge of the Holy Spirit. Ephesians 1, 13 and 14, in whom you trusted after you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after you believed you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. When I think of that, you know, my mind goes back to Stevie Wonder, signed, sealed, and delivered. I'm yours. Anybody remember that song? Uh, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession. You have been purchased unto the praise of his glory. And earnest means down payment or guarantee. Another word for earnest is engagement like an engagement ring. The Holy Spirit is our engagement ring uh, from the Lord. The church is the bridegroom and is engaged to Jesus Christ. And we are waiting for him to come and take us to the wedding. The Holy Spirit has given us, has pledged the promise concerning matters that will be revealed in the future. If the Holy Spirit is just the down payment, imagine what a full payment will be someday. Again, 2 Corinthians 2, 1 Corinthians 2, 9. But as it, is, as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, nor has it entered into the heart of man 
the things that God has planned for them that love him. I like this. 1 John 3, 2. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, in other words, presently, and it does not appear yet appear what we shall be like. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. We're going to be like him. I like that, don't you? Does anybody remember Superman? Is anybody in here old enough to remember Superman? Able to leap tall buildings in a single bound. Do you remember him, John? You knew him. <laughs> okay. Faster than a speeding bullet. More powerful than a locomotive. I can hardly wait. It's hard to believe uh, these promises are amazing. Don't forget the Bible says we are fearfully and wonderfully made. At Christmas time, a little boy finds where Mama had hid his Christmas presents. He feels around the paper and realizes a Tonka truck. He can't see it, but he knows it's coming at Christmas. I will tell you this, your new body is coming. Can I get one more amen tonight? Your new body is on the way. It's not on back order. I can almost feel it. I don't know about you, but at 75, I find new kinks uh, and, and bumps and, and uh, bruises. Yesterday, I was coming over here to speak to the teachers, and I was in a rush, and, uh, and I was prayed up. I was ready, and I'm in the kitchen, and I'm in my uh, pantry, and I turn the corner, and I hit the, uh, uh, the uh, fire extinguisher, and I knocked it off of the hook, and it landed on my foot. I'm here to tell you, I'm, I'm in pain tonight, but I'm here, and I know I'm going to get a new body someday. Amen. Amen. Listen, we see the promise of the new body, the pledge of the Holy Spirit, and we see the blessings of pleasing the Lord. Uh, again, Paul said, I'm in a straight between two. He was ready to depart. The first day I read that, I thought Paul was crazy, but now I know what he's saying. Jesus said, for I do always those things which please him. You say, Pastor, where do I start? Uh, just you and him. Pray expecting. Read his word. Ask God for understanding. Believe and trust every day. I will say this, give joyfully. Many Christians are tight because they are not giving to the Lord's work. In 1864, William Featherstone was 16 years old and he wrote these words to a hymn. My Jesus, I love thee. I know thou art mine. For thee the follies of sin I resign. My gracious Redeemer, my Savior art thou. If ever I love thee, my Jesus is now. Listen, gang, I don't care what you're going through. Let's keep one eye on eternity. Amen? Amen. And get your preacher to keep an eye out for you. Amen? Get him to pray for you. Uh, pray. Pray. Uh, Let's, let's see God do great things in our lives. Uh, I, one lady texted me tonight, and she said, Pastor, my fiancé feels like giving up. Uh, said he just doesn't seem to um, have any peace or comfort. And I can't wait to call him and encourage him with the word of God. Amen. Let's pray. Let's see. John, how about you coming up here and close us with a word of prayer? John the fisherman.
All right, let's pray. Dear God, our Heavenly Father, as we journey through this life, there are so many things that attract our attention, that causes us to that cause us to have fears, that cause us to tremble. But as we have been reminded this evening, may we always look beyond what this world presents and know that we are on a journey that will not end at the time of our earthly passing, nor will we be eternally confined to the ground. But there is that eternal home that awaits each and every one that knows you as their Lord and Savior. And we know that that can lift us above whatever this world tries to throw at us. And how thankful we are that we serve a God who is not only our creator, our savior, but also through your son, Jesus Christ, our hope of salvation. Thank you so much for all that you've seen fit to share with us. As we leave this place, may we go with the assuredness that you walk with us. And in all things, we would give you all the honor, glory, and praise. In your Son, Jesus Christ's name, we do pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Brother John. Mm -hmm. I want to say good night to uh, those out in YouTube land. And uh, look at God's Word, uh, study this week. We'll be having a good time. And uh, again, thank you, John. And tomorrow morning. And tomorrow morning, that's right, at Bob Evans down on the farm. Southwest 8 o'clock. Be sure to be there. I will uh, instruct on how to eat tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock. Adios. <laughs>